Well, hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and today we have another bit of a project. Let me show you what we just picked up, and I'll explain why we're doing it. <laughs> yep, this here is a marina pedestal. Oh, let me kind of show you what we got here. Well, there you go. This is the item we just picked up. Um, let's take a closer look at this, and I'll kind of explain what it is, where we got it, what we're doing with it, and why. Though you probably have an idea what we're doing with it. If you're into boats, you'd probably recognize this thing. But we decided we needed one here at our house. So what we have here is a, a standard sort of marine dock pedestal. Um, and I bought this used. These things, for just a small one with 30 amp usually only or 150 amp service, these things are about $1,200 new. It's absolutely crazy. Um, I went on like Facebook Marketplace and I've been looking for months and, and couldn't find any that were cheaper than $900, even used $900. So, um, heck, we drove all the way out to Sailor Man in Fort Lauderdale one day because they have one online that said they had a new arrival in. And, and that one, they wanted $880 for it. Um, and it was a little tiny one with one electrical outlet on it, one 30 amp outlet. It's terrible. So anyway, I was at a place called Don's, um, Don's Marine Boat Salvage or something like that up in Clearwater, Florida. It's like a junkyard for boats. And I saw one pedestal there and I asked if he had any more or you know what it, what, what he, what it cost. He's like, that's $150 for any of them you want. And I'm like, oh, I only saw one. He's like, oh, have, this guy will show you where there's more. And we went out back, you know, to this field of uh, broken dreams and boats. But in the back, he had a whole bunch of these things. And a lot of them were in really, really rough shape. This one was probably in the best shape of all of them in that it still had both of the doors on it. Um, so let me kind of show you what we have here, right? So it, it does have the light in the top, and I have no idea if any of this works. I really want this for the structure. I can always put in new breakers and everything else. But we had an electrician come out and give us a quote for running uh, a 50 amp service or two 30 amps out to the boat. And I thought, you know what, if we're gonna do this, let's do it right, put a pedestal there, we can hang our cords off and hoses off the side, run the water outlet right through it, uh, and it would be nice to have a couple of extra electrical outlets for Christmas lights or, you know, the hedge trimmers or anything else we might be doing out in the backyard by the dock. So, let me kind of orient us. So, yep, we have a light in the top, and forgive me, I got the screws off the top of this, but there's a light in the top. Uh, we have our service on this side. We do have a 50 amp and a 30 amp. So we have our 50 amp um, breaker, our 30 and our 20 amp breaker, and our 20 amp breaker is for this electrical outlet that I can't seem to open. Well, I should have opened that before I left. I'll have to probably replace that. Um, but the nice thing is it has the door here and it has an hours meter. Uh, it has connections for us to put water in it and then, you, you know, you can pull this panel off and that's where you get to all the electrical outlets. The nice thing about this one is it is a double-sided one. So we have the same thing again over here on this side. Hmm. I'll probably have to just replace those. But again, I have my 50 amp service, my 30, my two breakers. Um, for the 30, the 20, and the 50, and water goes both out of the other side. So in order to really get this thing going, what I want to do is completely take it apart. I want to pull the breakers out, the plugs out, um, take all the electrical wiring that's in here, make sure it's good. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get these plastic covers off without breaking them. I'm not sure how they're wedged into this piece. I'll take a look. And then I'm going to sand this thing down lightly, and I'm going to repaint the whole thing and get it ready and prep back up so I can uh, Put a little concrete pad by the dock, bolt this thing down into the concrete pad so I can remove it where need be, and I'll have the, um, the electrician come and put it in that spot. So, yeah, I think we're good. Let's start pulling this thing apart. Oh, there we go. Just had to lift up a little bit. All right, I've been trying to figure out the best place to arrange myself so that uh, the sun wasn't behind me too bad. So hopefully this works. Um, <laughs> So while I'm taking this, this top cover off, I'll share with you, as I was going through these, there was maybe eight or nine of these. And most of them had at least one broken door. And this one, the only one that had the two doors that looked good, didn't have this plastic lid on top. Instead, it had a piece of plywood <laughs> that was cut to that shape and spray painted gray, like that color. Um, <laughs> I kind of got a kick out of that. but. I thought, you know what, this is kind of a like a pull your own part uh, junkyard. So I ran out to the car and I grabbed some tools. Uh, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take a good cover off of another one. I'm gonna swap them out and, and kind of construct me one whole item here. 
which is exactly what I did. So, yeah, I don't know how well this stuff is going to be set in here. I guess we'll take a look and see. Got a fuse. We'll see if that's still good. I think that's for the light on the top. And in case anybody's worried, this is not connected to anything, so we're golden. All right, continuity tester. And the fuse is good. All right, that back in. All right, I'm just gonna start taking some of this apart so I can see how um, well all the components are set up in here. And I also wanna see how to remove these lenses and this gray plastic part that I think holds the door in. Because when I go to take this whole thing apart to, um, you know, to sand and paint, I certainly don't want those in the way or figuring out how to tape around them. Well, it's very interesting. It's got a couple of uh, interesting components in here that I'm not 100% sure what they are. I'm going to get some tape and I'm going to label this stuff to make sure that I can put it back the way I need to. So there is no place for wire nuts on a boat. But apparently, in a dock fixture, it's fine. <laughs> This one had some, and one's missing. I'm going to put one on here just to make sure I know where everything goes. There we go. That needs to be trashed. Alright, so I got the cover off and I've inspected this a little bit. I can kind of see here this, um, so this breaker right here is the 30 amp breaker for that 30 amp plug. The 20 amp breaker goes down here to the outlet. And then I've got my 50 amp here going to the 50 amp supply. What I'm not seeing yet, I need to find it, is where the hot is coming into this. It's interesting. Maybe it's on the inside. Put these breakers in place so I know where they go. I'm gonna pull this bottom cover off here too. I think this is just probably the water access, but let's see. I'm gonna pull these numbers off of here too. We don't want that on our slip out here. That's where the water connections would go. Mm. Plugs in and locks nicely. I'm gonna flip this around. We're gonna do the same on the other side because I wanna see where the electrical connections all come into this thing. Over here. Yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. Huh. That's the hour meter that's wired in there pretty shabbily. My watch continues to ask me if I'm washing my hands. So apparently the twisting motion of a screwdriver is a similar motion to your washing your hands. It's interesting, the one on the other side was actually aluminum. This one's plastic. I don't know if that's because the electric connection goes here or if it's just uh, because it broke and they replaced it, whoever, whatever marina had these things. Ah, uh, this is very interesting. Let's see if you can see this. It looks like they got some ferrite cores here. You put the load lines through these. I'll have to do some research and see what it is these things actually do. That's very interesting. Integrated metering system. Oh, maybe that's what runs the amp hours. Huh. That's pretty wild. 
Time to put this thing up on top of the table where I can take a good look at all the guts uh, in an easier, more comfortable way. All right, I've got it up on the table and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these um, hose and cord brackets, or I think I'm going to. Holy hell. This is just water on this side. That's only where all the electric goes in, right here. Ah, I see what it is, okay. So my hot would come directly up from my load into the actual panel up here. My uh, neutral would go right to here. My ground would connect right here, ties them all in together. All right, this makes sense. Get a little wire brush and just brush some of these off a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna start cleaning this up a little bit, maybe sanding the outside. I think I'm gonna see if the 50 amp plugs um, are the right sort of fit. I'm sure they are, but I'll double check. I'm a little bit worried about getting this off here. I'd love to be able to take this plastic sheathing off so that I could get to, for example, these plugs. I want to replace these 110 outlets. Um, this one, the GFCI, feels shot, and I can't really get to it with this plastic in the way. Um, I could use a uh, an oscillating cutter and cut around the outlet, put it on there, and then cover it again with a, um, a waterproof cover. That would probably be sufficient, but I'd rather not do that. But I don't want a chance breaking another one of these screws. That would not be good. So I'm going to keep putting PB Blaster on it and seeing what happens. All right, so I have been uh, just going through all the breakers, testing everything, cleaning up connections, pulling off a bunch of little uh, tag wires like over the years where somebody had broken a wire, replaced an outlet and just left the old wire there and cut it off at the terminal block. So been cleaning all those up and now I'm just cleaning up the connections that go between the uh, input, the line loads to the actual bus bar. Uh, just used a little wire wheel on the end of a drill and um, yeah, it's making a big difference, right? Cleaning up the end here where it makes contact with the bus bar. I have one strip screw here, and that's what I'm kind of working on right now, is to try to get this little screw out of here. Yeah, it's going. Now just using the wire wheel. Hands down, this is the best day of my life. Hands down, this is... Alexa, stop. <laughs> All right. Did you happen to see that? Uh, I set an alarm out here. We're going to go meet some friends today. And apparently this Alexa used to be in Swab's room, I'm guessing, because it had um, Olaf from Frozen saying, hands down, this is the best day of my life. And it literally scared me. I'm sure I jumped. Oh, golly. <laughs> Breakers on. Now, I wonder if this 50 amp breaker is bad. It may be. I'll buy one more breaker and I'll test it out with the new 50 amp and see if that makes a difference. All right. It is time to clean up. I'm just gonna put this piece back on real quick and we are gonna head out to go meet our friends. Time to clean up. We're gonna go uh, grab a few drinks down in Matt Lachey along the water. <laughs> 